Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Software Testing. I'm Daniel Knott, and I'm happy that you're here today. Today, I would like to talk about, again, beta testing communities on mobile apps, but this time for iOS. And this is exactly the topic, how to create a beta testing community on iOS. If you haven't seen my video on Android, make sure to watch the video in the, in the, in the upper corner and uh, take a look at how you can establish a beta testing community on Android. But today is all about iOS, so let's jump right into it. Why beta testing community? I already said this on Android, but I would like to rephrase this because it's really important why a beta testing community is so helpful for you as a tester or a developer or product manager. So beta testing community provides early feedback of a new app version, right? So whenever you have implemented a new feature, you get insights in terms of stability. How stable is your product? Is the app stable enough to handle the many requests? Is the um, underlying API fast enough to handle all the requests? Is the backend fast enough to handle all the, require, uh, the re requests and responses that comes along with the new feature, for example? So how is the overall stability of your product? Um, of course, beta testers will find bugs and will report them to you and will give feedback and you get valuable insights um, in terms of functionality, but also in terms of usability. So for example, if there are any usability glitches uh, or issues in your app that you haven't catched or haven't seen so far, because you, you may be blind in, in your product development at, at, an, at some stage. So this is all valuable feedback that you can gain from your beta testing community. And of course, you can get an overall satisfaction indicator, seeing, okay, is the app or the feature that we just developed good enough to ship for a bigger audience or not? Then we have to work on, uh, then we have to work on it again. Um, but it's, it's a really cool thing to get the overall satisfaction from a beta testing community already. It's also increasing the loyalty into your product. So for example, um, users feel welcome, they feel heard. That's also my, my next point, that users feel heard whenever you, you ask them for feedback and you give them specific insights on how the development is going, what kind of new features are coming up, why, they, um, why the feedback that they are providing is so important. And users feel welcome, they, they like it, and they feel welcome and they feel heard, and it will increase your loyalty, and then they might recommend your product to friends, family, or to anyone else that they they think the help might the app might be helpful, and of course beta testing are um, communities are really great to release with more confidence because if you know that your app is stable enough, has no bugs, has a good usability, or the overall satisfaction is, is pretty good, you can really ship with confidence and and look forward to the feedback from the from the remaining users. Um, so how to do a beta testing community uh, on iOS? Well, I have to say it's much easier on the Android side than on iOS. On iOS, there are like not too many tools provided by Apple to do it, like internal or in-house tools. And you have to go the way with uh, so-called distribution frameworks. So what is this all about? Basically, on iOS, you have two options to choose from. So let's take a look at option one. Option one is an internal test that you can conduct. You can um, invite or set up up to 100 testers, colleagues per app, and you have to invite them via email addresses to test flight. And test flight is the, the, the tool, the framework that Apple bought some years ago and integrated into the, uh, in the, in the development chain of the Apple products or the development tools with Xcode. And you can invite these 100 test users, colleagues to your app via, um, via email and test flight. And then test flight, test flight is uh, distributing the app to the testers on their phone. They will get a normal push notification and saying, hey, there is an app update. The next time you open up the app and then you can download and install it. Um, it's easy to set up this option, definitely. Uh, and it's perfect for internal alpha testing. So for example, within your team, within your department, or even within your company, if you have uh, less than 100 testers that would like to test the app. So that's a really easy option. And I highly recommend you to set up this, uh, this option because it's, it's a really good um, good thing to do because you get really good feedback from 100 colleagues if you have them. So what is option two? Option two is of course then with external testers or groups, um, you can set up up to 10,000 10, testers. Um, 
However, you have to again add them via email addresses to test flight. And this is from my point of view, is not really something really well done from, from the on the Apple side because you have to invite them via email. They have to click the link in the public link and then they have to subscribe um, to your beta testing um, channel or to your beta testing distribution. However, what I would recommend you to do is you can create a public app store and this is, can be a really simple web interface and this is basically contains a list of the app that are being distributed with the frameworks being a test flight or there are also other tools like app center and you can advertise this this landing page or this web page or this internal app store and people can sign up there to become a beta tester and it's a much nicer opt-in um, yeah experience for users and rather than getting an email the email goes to the spam folder and so forth and so forth and it's not so cool and what you can also do is you can then create different test groups on different features that's something that i really like so you can find okay this feature goes to test group a the other feature goes to test group b for example so we can also do a little a b test if we would like to do so what else can you use as a distribution? I already highlighted or like uh, mentioned it before. There are of course other tools that you can use uh, on iOS side. So if you don't want to rely on test flight because test flight, the drawback is that you can only use it for iOS applications and not for Android. Um, so in case your company has, um, let's say an app that is on iOS and Android available, test flight might not be the best solution to use as a distribution framework because uh, you have to then maintain two distribution frameworks in, in, in terms you, you use also on Android side an external distribution framework. Then I would highly recommend you to use tools such as um, App Center, BitRise or other tools that are available and are for iOS and Android because then you have only one tool that you have to set up to, to configure to distribute apps to your beta testers. Um, yeah, that's similar to Android. So whenever you use tools such as App Center, you have to configure the app, you have to configure the CI um, for, for the specific setup to, to being able to, pop, to push to that um, distribution framework or distribution list. It's definitely more work inside the development team, so but it's an initial work and setup, right? So once you have set it up and it's running, there's not much to do unless there is an, an iOS update, an operating system app update or an Android um, update coming along. So you have to make sure that everything works as expected. But the big drawback that I see here is the menu selection um, and creation of the beta testing beta testers that can be really challenging because imagine finding uh, 10,000 beta testers, uh, find them, like where to find them, how to contact them, how to get them on board, and of course how to convince them to join the program, right? You can do, of course, you can say, okay, you have a landing page again and you advertise this landing page saying, hey, become a beta tester and for those uh, who send in really great feedback or find critical issues, you can uh, give them some reward in terms of uh, prices, money or whatever you would like to do. This is, of course, um, something that, that users would like to have, but I have never seen it so far for, for big apps or for apps out there that are um, using this kind of, of mechanism. Um, bug reporting. This is also something that I already initially said on the Android side and it's similar thing on iOS. So the bug reporting should be decoupled from beta testing but should be combined. So what is, what is meant by that? Um, you, the bug reporting comes basically with tools or libraries that you integrate to your product such as TestFlight, App Center, Firebase, Crashlytics or any other tool that is available on the market. You can integrate them to your beta testing apps or your, to your production apps, of course. And there you get some bug reports um, or some crash logs, for example, some warning logs and some statistics from users, how they use the product. And in case of an error, for example, you can see the steps that they, they have taken and so forth. Um, you can also integrate tools such as uh, Instabug, for example. You can shake the device to send a bug report. That's a really nice feature, especially something for, for beta tester or alpha testers. Because imagine you are like uh, outside uh, in a train, for example, and you use the product and you find a bug, but you don't have anything to, to capture the bug in terms of taking a photo. Hey, you're using the device. You can, of course, do a screenshot. And, um, but the shaking is already doing it, doing the trick, doing a screenshot. And then you have also some, some drawing options on the screen. You can mark it, you can highlight it, send some text, and then easily send them this information to, uh, to the development team. And that's something I would say is really cool. 
and you should also add an entry in the app settings um, to provide or to give guidance on how to send feedback to the development team and maybe if you have time you can also add a re bug reporting interface like a little interface um, like give them some name email address uh, little steps to reproduce and a screenshot or a video attachment um, that that's something that you should uh, keep an eye on or should think of um, community communication yeah, you should communicate with your testers or beta testers whenever you have them established because it's it's really important to provide them with in detailed information about the new app release. You have to tell them like, hey, look, there is a new app um, release. We implemented feature X, Y, Z, and this might be important for you because it's a completely new sign-up process or is a new checkout process or it has some new um, fancy gestures or new camera options so give them guidance on where to look for bugs or for issues because otherwise depending on the app size it might be too broad to hey, test the app but hey what has changed right so this is valuable information that you should um, give to your beta testers um, once you have a beta testing community it's also important to interact with them reply give them guidance in terms of bugs or workarounds that they have found, give them feedback, say, hey, thank you, that was great that you found the bug, that you filed it, that you sent it over to us, it was really helpful. Um, but on the other side, you should not underestimate the effort that you have to put into this, because depending on the community size, let's imagine you have 10,000 beta testers and uh, 6,000 bug reports coming in, who should review the bug reports, right? Um, what what's the process here um, and how to how to handle it so what are the pros and cons of, of beta testing on iOS um, the pros for sure is uh, is a great source of feedback and insights it's early feedback and you can iterate fast on it so that's really cool depending on how often you you send a beta app to your to your beta testers you get constant and instant feedback on new app versions and it's perfect to iterate on it on the, on the negative side, uh, the setup requires more work on the development team on iOS. Finding beta testers can be difficult. As I said, you have to invite them via email, uh, make sure that they sign up, uh, maybe contact them again. Hey, you forgot to click the link and these kind of things. It requires much more communication compared to Android. And of course, it requires more work in terms of community handling, community management, and also bug feedback handling. So this is something you should consider. It's the same drawback that I see on iOS as well as on Android. So let's take a look at the summary. Beta testing on iOS is more complex to set up compared to Android. That's a fact. Uh, you have limited options. We have, as you can um, remember, you have two options. Option one, the internal testing one, and option two is the external one via distribution framework. Um, However, you can still get early and fast feedback of new app versions, which is still great, and it's the effort worth doing. You get valuable insights on the app under test, because this makes the, the app better in the end. Community handling requires some additional time. This is something you should keep in mind. And this is really not something you can un should underestimate, because I think, depending on the app size and on the, on the um, beta tester size, this can be a full-time job for at least one or two person to handling of the community. And with that, we are already done with the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If yes, leave me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. This is motivating for me to create more content. And speaking of more content, um, you have heard the, the problem with community handling and how to deal with the lots of feedback. And there maybe there is a new video coming up pretty soon. It's about crowd testing and how crowd testing can be helpful for you as a mobile tester or software tester or any kind of tester out there in the product. Because the power of the crowd is nothing to underestimate. And with the help of crowdsourcing provider, it might be much easier for you to handle all the different defects coming in. So stay tuned, have a nice day and bye bye.